How do you exactly. how do you keep your spirits up and stay positive out here? Hey man, you just bend in, say hello. No matter what anybody says to you, man, just respect anybody. You just, just be you. People fall in love with them, with natural personalities, bro. See, a lot of people who look at you and they're angry, like look at you like this. Oh, he stinks or nothing. This, they come to a doorknob where you're at, you know, shirt on and all that. After a while, that stops and you stay positive. You understand? God sent COVID for a reason. We all came together. We all, government, did for people. What, what have you learned since you've been out here? We miss a lot of segments, bro. Honestly, real listen. Real people do real things, bro. I feel like a real person. They don't cost me nothing. Ha ha! Freedom ain't free. Peace of mind, ain't you? You gotta work for it, you understand? Ladies and gentlemen, anybody watching this video, I'm homeless by choice because it makes me feel better. My spirit. What's up, guys? Welcome to another video. It's your boy, Rigo the Trainer, on a mission to change and impact as many lives as possible. Today, we got the story of Sarge very electrifying and emotional story you don't want to miss this stay tuned and watch to the end what's up man how you feeling today i'm great kid what's can up you with you can you tell me your name and where you from my name is Saj, and i'm from the city of brotherly love okay and how long you been out here on the streets may 31st i had an heart attack may june right june 15th i better ask you june 15th Three years ago. Okay, and how did you first become homeless? I was homeless years ago when crack stormed into America and other households across the country. I spent four years on the run, by the way. Several drug related cases and events. Now, homeless by choice and on the run, I jetted out of that hospital as fast as I could after I got the health care I needed before the feds turned me over to the Philadelphia police. And I've been homeless ever since. Though there have been periods of time where so, I've lived indoors, but for the most part, homeless. Did drugs play a part? And you being out here? Hell yeah. Oh, damn right they did. And, Duh. did and, and did you get help for the drug use? No. I got help when I got caught in prison. Subsequently, case was dismissed. And I just, I just went to rehab because I didn't really have nowhere else to go. And I was kind of sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know what I mean? I'm a full-fledged member of Narcotics Anonymous. Spent a lot of years in that program, a lot of life-changing years. I changed a lot of lives. I supported some people, and some people changed my life and supported me. I had involvement in other group community, churches, activisms, and all kinds of stuff, man. I truly am not somebody that's nobody or that will never be nothing. I felt like a man. So, my current decision is, do I want to do it again? Since I'm not, quote unquote, immediately going to die from my several injuries and heart condition. But I struggle with that from day to day. Right now, we want to live. There's more to me than just oh. one guy. How long you been clean? About five months. Five months? Well, maybe a little less, but it was definitely over four. How, how, how does it feel now that you're out here clean as opposed to when you were out here high? I'm not sure I want to be clean. It's just a day of the time experience. Last couple of days, I really wanted to sleep. I'm tired, bro. It's not just tired of drugs. We're supposed to live past 25. 
and everybody said that about me is dead. Including my mama and my daddy. They're dead. Dead. They said you wouldn't live past 25? Yeah. That hurt me to my heart, bro. Nobody loved me. Nobody believed in me. Nobody ever cared about me. So who are you? Because where am I see? If your mama don't love you, nobody will. But the number one thing is you got to love yourself. So when you start smoking crack, because God damn it, that's the whole story in itself. I don't give a damn anymore. I'm tired. Oh, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm trying to be something. I'm just not. I married my prostitute. <laughs> and I'm raising the kids. Can't you hate my guts unless I'm buying five, six, seven hundred dollars expensive items and shit like that. Same thing with the girlfriend. You follow me? Long story short, bro. I'm living my best life. So to all you people out there to say, I ain't got a dollar. I ain't got nothing. I ain't asking you for nothing. For all you people who feel that people who beg or ask for help or live in the street are derelicts, guess what? We are, and so are you. Never judge a book by its cover. That's, that's how it is. Always take a look at the ingredients of a person. And that's all I've been doing. You How do you it. feel about me and what I do and who I am to you? What I'm trying to tell you is the people in my life that I met on these streets, yourself included, are the best friends I've ever had in my life. I got you, bro. I ain't got a lot of you. I can be who I am. I feel like a man, a good man, an honest man, a human being. You understand? We ain't having dressing contests and we ain't playing basketball. This ain't no games. I got a good life. And the people that I know or I let into my inner space are proud to be near me. You're real. And I'm sorry, like I said. I didn't mean to put you down. So I was out here, man, fighting for my life every day. I had some boa with a damn camera and some steps and some bricks to pick up and exit. What the fuck is this about? Oh, I want you to be healthy. I want you to be healthy. I'm an old man. My fat ass was dying from diabetes. I was 228 pounds. Where the hell was you at that day, Mr. Godson? <laughs> my wife. <laughs> Nursed me out of that. I met you and at the, the right job, time, man. Job, everything happens in time, place. My wife ministry. Ministry. I, I, I think that's the right word. And dominated that eating change and uh, waste management. God hired a four time felon and put me in 110 plus degrees over t truck with the windows down, no air conditioning. And to jump out on my side and throw trash all day long. And 78 pounds came off my ass in a summer. You understand, son? So I went from outgrowing all my clothes to throwing them out and getting new fat body clothes to losing 78 pounds and having no clothes. My own drawers didn't fit anymore. So God took care of me then. You came in and made a donation to my spirit. What about the bricks or the lifting or the exercise? You probably played a part in saving my life today. Because I'm talking to you now, bro. I'm telling you, bro, I'm sick. I'm sick. I'm tired. I remember you telling me you tired. had. I remember you telling me you had heart conditions. 
Tired, and, I, and I told you that you should be exercising. You remember that? Yeah, but I'm dying. I'm going to die. Exercising. Hey, let's go get me four of them bacon, turkey, sandwich thingy things we just had. <laughs> I'll show you exercise. Listen, <laughs> I didn't have and sometimes don't have the will. The strength. Bro, I'm fighting dudes in the streets, man. I'm fighting. Young as men, not little boys. Everybody's talking about it all over all over my history. We'll kill him. I got guys with guns looking for me. I got an apartment I've been having for two months. I've only stayed there two weeks. I ain't been back since. And the rent's paid. And I can go home this very minute. Why haven't you been back to the apartment? I went back one time. I took a young lady with me. Well, she wasn't young. She was my age, but I took a woman with me. And the brother opened the door. And, she the, and told me to get the F away from his house. And this, that, and the third. After the other brother told me, just come back to the house. And, house. and this is your house? It's the place I rented. It's their house. Their apartment. I just rented a space. Hell, they needed me to pay the rent and pay off the drug dealer to try to kill this motherfucker because he didn't have their money. That's my story about it. And I don't like being used as that. Then the next month, I lost almost over half my check because I was getting drugs on credit from the fool. And I wasn't keeping count. And he was making up numbers as he went along. So I went from sharing my entire check to get an apartment to sharing over half my check, 700 of which, was not even asked for it because he had the card and the note. You understand where I'm coming from? Now, a lot of issues do not want to be in this house. Like they mentioned all the crack upstairs. Dope. Hookers. One of my main Achilles heels. It's just not a good place for me to be. But I, it's safer than being out here on these streets, bro. When I wake up, God pisses me off every time. Why, why do God piss you off? He keeps waking me up. Shouldn't you be grateful for waking up? If you want to die, a peaceful death. If you just don't want to exist anymore, bro, then your goal is to die. Oh, why, let's blow your head off. No, that's why don't you? Why don't you want to exist no more? I had a great life, man. Some days now, my heart's getting better. I smile. I smile at that. It makes me feel like I was wrong. And all uh, you guys, like you, were right. I don't get to I don't get to decide that. I don't get to give up. I'm trying to convince myself I gotta live every single day. To the best of my blood. I need to take my medicine. I need to go to the hospital. I hate the VA. I hate the people there. But I need to go there. I need to do the best I can to try to share the best experience of life that I can under any and all circumstances, even if I'm bedridden, bro. So, some days I want to die. Now, but most days I don't. But at this point, if I were to die today, it wouldn't be as a murderer or the guy who nearly took someone's life in a crack house. Because he's a crackhead. That won't be my final story, bro. You know what I'm saying? That makeshift life I created, that won't be it either. This interview, this what's happening now, is my final it is a part of my final story. You know what I'm saying? I'm sorry. What 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 do you want your final story to be? If I can stay level headed, if I can get all you know, if I can put it, I put everything back together. And you know that three months where I had I had like eighteen pairs of sneakers, bro, shoes, clothes, I was flying to hell. Yo, I had a life, bro. I was about to buy a car, but since I was going to jail for the rest of my life, I didn't dive into that. I almost did. I should have. Uh, 
It felt good being my old self. No, I can't say that. It felt good being my real self. You understand, Rico? My life before the tragedy was fake. I financially orchestrated every relationship, including my own children. Got me? That my other family don't even know about. And I was such a liar, such a fake dude, right? Everything was image for me. So the life I live today, even though it starts from this park and a bacon, I ate the whole thing. That shit. Wow. That shit was good. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Bro, that's, that just messed the whole interview up. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Uh, How good was I'm about to go down there and bang at the door. Yo, can you make me a sandwich? <laughs> you watch. You fucking watch. Don't go right there. Uh, listen. Uh, that sandwich was good, huh? I feel like I'm having sex in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is fire. <laughs> this sandwich is so good. I feel like you're having sex in your mouth. It is merely impossible to help everyone. But my mission is to change as many lives as possible. Thanks for all your support. Please like, share, subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you next week with another video.